Hey YouTubers, uh, had a couple comments on my uh, one of my last videos about what is the New Covenant by Christopher Marlowe. He gave some scriptures and I wanted to um, respond. Uh, the first one he says, Therefore the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath also. And I, I think what you're getting at is um, perhaps that the Sabbath applies under the New Covenant of Christ. If we look at the context of that, I'll just explain how I understand that passage. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus is passing through grain fields on the Sabbath. And uh, they start picking up heads of grain and eating them. And the Pharisees are disturbed because they say it's not uh, lawful to work on the Sabbath. And um, Jesus uses this as a, a teachable moment. He's, he's using this to teach them about what the Sabbath actually is. He uses the example how David... Uh, went in and ate the showbread. Um, he says also, and I don't remember if it's this account or another account, but the priests are not held liable for their work on the Sabbath because they're actually baking, they, you know, they replace the showbread every Sabbath and actually bake the bread, which is far more labor intensive than actually just taking grains and, and putting, you know, picking grains and putting it in their mouth. And then in verse 27, uh, Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is even Lord of the Sabbath. And my understanding of this is not that necessarily uh, the Sabbath uh, applies into the New Covenant. Uh, you'd have to verify that by reading the rest of the uh, scriptures in the, what we call the New Testament. I think more importantly, he's saying he has the authority to uh, define matters of, of judgment regarding the Sabbath. And uh, he's, he's saying that I have the authority to teach about the Sabbath. And they had some misunderstandings about what the, what the Sabbath was. So that's, that's the first one. I, I don't think that's, um, I'm not convinced by that passage that the Sabbath applies under the New Covenant. Uh, maybe you could give me some other scriptures where you, where you feel that way. Um, a, a later on, in fact, um, in other scriptures, the New Testament says we're not supposed to be judged by a new moon or a Sabbath or a feast day. That same, those things apply to the old law. The next one uh, you give is uh, Luke 18, 15 through 16, where it says, Now they were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. Uh, wait, he, they rebuked him. Uh, but Jesus called them, just uh, saying, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for such belongs to the kingdom of God. And I'm, I'm not really sure you didn't give any comments on this, but I know a lot of people uh, justify infant baptism by this passage. But let's go to Luke 18, and um, if you notice the full passage, you, you're talking about 15 through 16, but if you go to the very next verse, verse 17, it says, Truly I say to you, whoever, do not whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. And so... I'm not convinced by that passage that God is talking about baptizing babies, as many refer. There's nothing about baptizing in there. It's just saying, don't prevent children uh, coming to me. And, and certainly, we don't prevent children coming uh, to hear the words of Christ uh, in churches today. But there's no example in the New Testament of them baptizing them. Christ made it clear that if you want to come to him and enter a covenant relationship, you're going to have to come like a child. In fact, in Matthew 18, when his disciples are arguing about who's the greatest in the kingdom, in verses 1 through 4, uh, Jesus calls a child to himself and sets, it, sets the child before him and says, uh, Truly I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You see there, uh, Christ is using a child as a, as a teaching aid. In verse 4 he says, Whoever then humbles himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So should we take it literally, um, or should we understand in the context that Jesus is praising some attributes about children that we should be um, exhibiting, and if we want to enter into the kingdom of God? And I think you had one other one, oh, two other scriptures. Acts 16.33, where it talks about the same hour of the night he was baptized with all his family, and 1 Corinthians 1.16, where it says, I did, not bab I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. And I assume you mean by this, uh, I know some people have used these scriptures to justify infant baptism by saying they baptized all his family. He baptized the household. 
And so there must have been babies in those households. Well, we don't know that there were babies in that household. There could have been children there. Uh, we don't know how many people were in the household. In that society, extended families lived with each other. In fact, uh, a father and mother might still be living with some of their um, children and their families. You may have elderly people living in there, aunts and uncles, all kinds of things. But I want you to think about this. Even if there were babies in the household, could they follow the command that Peter gave in Acts 2.38, the first gospel sermon, where he says, when, when they ask, what shall we do? Um, he said, repent and be baptized. Oh, can a baby repent? Uh, can a baby repent of their sin? A baby doesn't know what's going on. Ephesians 2.8 says we are saved by grace through faith. We access God's grace through our faith. Well, what does a baby believe? A baby doesn't believe in anything other than perhaps uh, mother's milk. Romans 10.17 says faith comes from hearing. So a baby would have to hear God's word, believe it or have faith in it, repent of their wicked, sinful ways, and then be baptized. Romans 10.17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And furthermore, we have no examples of babies being baptized. So I don't say these things to um, upset you in any way. I just want us to look at the scriptures and really question whether or not perhaps some of the things that we've been taught all our life are really according to what God's word says. If I have things uh, wrong in any way, please uh, point out using scriptures, and I, I hope that I would be honest and fair enough to look at them rationally and not be blinded. I'm not claiming to have everything right. I'm just uh, a Bible student, uh, first and foremost, and I, I want to learn the Bible and, and do what's right according to God's Word. hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, leave them below.